Linvoseltamab is an investigational bispecific antibody being studied in patients with multiple myeloma. Linvoseltamab binds to B-cell maturation antigen, or BCMA, on the surface of myeloma cells. It also binds to CD3 on the surface of T-cells. By linking T-cells to myeloma cells, it can elicit an immune response directed at the cancer. BCMA is an ideal target for multiple myeloma since it's almost exclusively expressed on plasma cells. Plasma cells are the type of cell that are myeloma cells. It is expressed to a very low degree on other cell types, but not to a significant extent such that we would have a lot of side effects uh, when those cells are targeted. So it's primarily just the myeloma cells and the healthy plasma cells that are targeted. Linvo seltamab is being investigated in a clinical trial, and in that study, intravenous Linvo seltamab is given once a week, um, and it was done that way for 14 weeks. After that, patients can reduce the frequency of Linvo seltamab to every other week. In some patients, achieving a very good partial response or better, which means a 90% reduction in the monoclonal protein, the drug is infused once a month. So linvoseltamab is infused over four hours, but it can be reduced to two hours and subsequently one hour if the patients aren't experiencing any cytokine release syndrome. It is given in a step-up dosing. The purpose of the step-up dosing is to gradually uh, initiate the therapy so that if patients are experiencing cytokine release syndrome, the symptoms are not as severe. The step-up dosing works as follows. Patients are given the dose twice, one week apart. The first dose is administered in the hospital with 48 hours of observation after the administration of the drug. Patients go home as long as they're not experiencing any side effects. The following week, they come back to the hospital and receive a second dose. There, they only have to be observed for 24 hours. If the patients are doing well with that second dose, they can move on to the full dose. The full doses are given outpatient. Um, the recommended full dose is 200 milligrams, and it's given weekly, uh, intravenously, in the clinic. So during the step-up dosing, we do recommend pre-medications. We usually give dexamethasone, Benadryl, and Tylenol. If patients are doing really well without any cytokine release syndrome, those pre-medications can be discontinued at the discretion of the physician. Linvoseltamab, uh, like other bispecific antibodies, is off the shelf, meaning it does not require patients' own cells to be manufactured, which is the case for CAR T-cell therapy. But it works very much like CAR T-cell therapy in that it's eliciting a T-cell response against myeloma. Because it is off the shelf, one of the advantages is it can be administered very quickly at the time the need is determined, whereas a CAR T cell can take up to three weeks to be manufactured. The primary side effect of linvoseltamab is cytokine release syndrome. In the phase one, two clinical trial, 46% trial, of patients experience cytokine release syndrome. Cytokine release syndrome is a flu-like illness with fevers, chills, sometimes low blood pressure. This must be monitored and treated in the hospital. We can treat mild cases with just Tylenol, but more severe cases require an infusional drug called tocilizumab. Tocilizumab is an anti-IL-6 therapy that calms down the immune system and reverses some of the side effects of cytokine release syndrome. The majority of the cytokine release syndrome is grade one and two. Uh, we don't see very many of the higher grade cytokine release syndrome. About 8% of patients receiving linvoseltamab do experience some neurologic toxicity, which is on par with the other bispecific antibodies. So linvoseltamab is being studied in a phase 1-2 clinical trial known as the LINKER study. In this study, there were approximately 235 participants, 
and patients were followed for a median of 11 months. And at the time that the, the data was reported, 71% of patients achieved an overall response, with 46% of patients achieving a complete response or better. This is very similar to what we're seeing with the other bispecific antibodies that have been FDA approved. Linvoseltamab is being studied as a single agent, not combined with other drugs, uh, but in the future it will likely be combined with other therapies, uh, depending on, on how it goes. The linvoseltamab uh, was studied in a clinical trial in which patients had three prior lines of therapy. This had to include a proteasome inhibitor, a immunomodulatory drug, and an anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody. Proteasome inhibitors include carfilzomib, bortezomib, or exazomib. These are older agents that work by inhibiting the proteasome inside of myeloma cells, which is the protein factory. Immunomodulatory drugs include lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and thalidomide. And these are drugs that activate the immune system, directing T cells and NK cells in a nonspecific way to fight cancer. Anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies include daratumumab and isatuximab, and these are antibodies that bind to CD38 on the surface of myeloma cells and elicit a direct immune response to the cancer. In February of 2024, the FDA approved an application for priority review of linvoseltamab. This means that instead of the regular 10-month review process, it will be reduced to six months. So hopefully by the end of this year, we will have some results in terms of the recommendations of the FDA for approval of linvoseltamab. I think the big difference between linvoseltamab and the currently available anti-BCMA bispecific antibodies is linvoseltamab is given intravenously, whereas the others are given subcutaneously. However, linvoseltamab can potentially be given once a month in patients who have achieved a very good partial response after the first 14 weekly doses, so that's a particular advantage. And finally, the cytokine release syndrome rate is around 46% compared to the other uh, approved uh, bispecific antibodies, which is closer to 70%. So there, even though it targets the same protein on myeloma, there are some advantages to linvoseltamab compared to the other therapies.